I heard that a nurse in America just fell in a shopping mall and behold, she gave up the ghost. I got to get this video from Obodo Yibo um, Instagram. She was the one who posted this video and I got it from her and I thought I should share it with you people. It's, it's, it's a, it, there's a lot of lessons on this. So let's listen to her. Hello, my name is Dr. Omarine. I'm an ER physician in Texas. And I'm here to encourage those of us who work in the medical field to take better care of ourselves. So if you work in the medical field or you know someone who works in the medical field, this message is for them. Especially those of us who do shift work. So this applies to those who work in nursing homes, rehab facilities, and um, you may even be working in somebody's home um, or in the hospital. This is a story that happened uh, two days ago. So it just happened last week. I am going to tell you the story and then I'm going to give you just a few suggestions on how you can take the lessons from this story and apply it into your life. Because my goal here is just to encourage, to encourage all of us to take better, to take better care of ourselves. We give a lot to the medical field. So let us not take care of others and not take care of ourselves. So I'm going to call this lady Jane. Jane is a lady who is in her early 50s, and I've worked with her at the hospital for a few months. Um, she has been in the hospital for, I mean, in the, in the medical field, been a nurse for over 30 years. The hospital that we work in, in the emergency room is very busy, and the patients are quite sick. They have a lot of medical problems. It is not uncommon to have a night where you have so many sick patients that you don't even sit, have the time to sit down and eat anything. It is not uncommon to have patients who code, which means that they lose their pulse and have to be on life support or have to be emergently flown out to other bigger centers or have to be admitted in the ICU. So this is quite busy hospital so guys please follow this um the narration here so dr mira is, is the one narrating i worked with jane on thursday night so our shift starts at 7 p.m ends at 7 a.m in the morning so i worked with her thursday night friday night and then on saturday night i came in and the first thing i asked was where is jane because jane is the charge nurse which means she's in charge of all the other nurses and they said well jane called in they've called her they've texted her they didn't reach her come to find out two hours later her son calls us and says jane she had gone shopping with her with someone and they were in the store she fainted and they called the ambulance they tried to resuscitate her they even flew out to a different hospital. They didn't get her. Back. She didn't but make it back. Jane was a very hardworking nurse. Hmm. She used to work. Her standard was to work six days a week and have one day off. And a lot of times in this hospital, because the patients are so sick, they used to have shortage of nurses. So they would ask her to do extra shifts. And so it wasn't uncommon for Jane to work in addition to the six days a week that she always does, she will work sometimes 10 days in a row, be off for one day, 12 days in a row, and be off for one day. Okay. I feel like I have to say something. Hey, Jane, please slow down. Hmm. But she had a project that she was trying to save money for in November. Hmm. Can you hear that? She was trying to save money for a project in November. This is very common now. Come on now. We, we are Africans now. We always have projects, especially Nigerians. All of our African people have projects. 
And the thing that makes it even so, so, so... What she used to tell us, don't worry. I am working hard because I have this project in November. Mm. Once I'm done with this project, I will stop. I'll take a long vacation and I'll stop working this hard. Mm. But unfortunately, she did not make it. Oh, my people. Chai. I don't even know how I felt when I listened to this yesterday. Thank you. All the nurses who are listening to me, all the doctors who are listening to me, everybody who works as an LVN, a CNA, care workers who do shift works, you are aware of these stories. But why don't we make the changes? So permit me to just give you three things that I have noticed as a problem. And I will just permit me to give you three simple solutions. The first issue that I've seen is number one, procrastination. Procrastination. I'm talking to you and I'm talking to myself. You see, a few years ago, I myself, Dr. Omerine, I almost had an accident. Why? I was working a lot and I almost fell asleep at the wheel. When that happened to me, I woke up and I started implementing changes in my life. I started going to see my doctor. I started getting my routine checks. I started exercising. I started drinking water. I stopped procrastination, procrastinating. The reason why we procrastinate is because we are busy. We are mothers, we are fathers. We have so many things pulling us from so many areas. But if you do not have a body that works for you, if you don't have a strong, healthy body, then, and you continue to break down that body, then it's just a matter of time for that. The solution I want to propose to you today is if you are listening to this information and you know you need to take better care of yourself, maybe is maybe you need to see your doctor. Maybe you need to get a mammogram. Maybe you need to drink more water. Maybe you need to exercise. Pause the program and go and do something small. Do it today and do it now. If you know you need to drink more water, pause this program, go and drink a glass of water. If you know you need to exercise, pause the, pro pause the program and do three jumps of exercise or walk in place. Don't hurt your knees. Walk in place for one minute. Problem number one is procrastination and the solution is do it today, do it now. Problem number two is this. We do not prioritize our health. Why don't we prioritize our health? Because we feel fine. We feel fine. Jane has been a, a nurse for over 30 years. So, of course, she is aware of the signs of, um, you know, something wrong in her body. So, why didn't she seek help? That's because there are a lot of silent, you may have something brewing underneath. There are a lot of people who come into the, to the emergency room with, with very, very high blood sugars, very, very high um, uh, blood pressures, and they do not even know that they had hypertension. Mm. They did not know. Mm. So start prioritizing your health. I started prioritizing my health for the sake of my kids. So the problem number two, I said problem number one was procrastinating. Let me say something about that. I Personalize it. Mm -hmm. So you may be listening to this information and you say, well, oh, this is Not so sad, question. this is a sad story. God forbid. That you, 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 know, it, you think that, okay, it could happen to others. It will not happen to you. This is not in our family. Mm. It is not in our bloodline. It's witches God in my forbid. village. Mm. You are a human being. Of course. And these things happen to anybody. It happens to anybody. So the problems are we procrastinate. We do not prioritize. And we do not personalize it. Hmm. 
it could yeah. just be because you're not caring for yourself properly. Um, I hope that this information helps someone out there. Again, you and I, as physicians, as nurses, as CNAs, as LVNs, should take better care of ourselves. And in this audio, I just want to give you some practical things. The job of a nurse is extremely difficult and extremely tasking, especially when you work in a place where they have high volume of people, big hospitals, anywhere, even care homes, residential care, um, domiciliary care, uh, nursing homes, um, hospitals, as long as you're a healthcare worker, the job is, is, is tasking and if you're not careful, you will lose yourself. If you're not careful as a healthcare giver, you will lose yourself. You end up giving care and end up not giving yourself any care. Most caregivers don't listen to themselves. They don't, they don't, including me, including me, including me. You don't prioritize yourself. You don't prioritize yourself. You get so stressed, especially when you have children. You go to work, you come back, you face your children, you 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 do house chores, you do this, you do that, you do this. You keep pushing your body, you keep pushing your body, you keep pushing your body. Let me tell you guys a story. Yeah, this one is personal, a personal story. I went to work one day. I did a six hour shift though. Nobody said not even long, no, eight hours shift. Not be saying a very long one where people where they do 12 hours. Some people do 12 hours continuously every day, seven days a week, 12 hours. I did eight hours shift. I finished, came back home. I was still in school then, you know. I have assignments, you know, I did not sleep well. Woke up in the morning, did eight hour shift, came back home, quickly got something to eat, and I had to make my daughter's hair, you know, I was braiding her hair. While I was sitting down in the sitting room braiding her hair, in the living room braiding her hair, I started feeling some kind of pain, you know, pain I could not explain. It seems like I want to ease myself. It seems like I, like I want to vomit. I, I just don't understand myself. So I went to the bathroom. I went to the, um, you know, the whatever. <laughs> so I got there and I, I don't know what to do. Don't have to sit or stand or whatever before i know what was happening i fell hmm. i fell i could not say anything i was just i just fell down holding my my chest behold thank god my second daughter was in her room so she walked out and she saw that the door of the bathroom was open she saw that i was sitting on the floor i was on the floor she came in and called my name mommy mommy I could not respond where I was hearing her. I know what was happening around me, but I just could not speak. So much pain, I don't understand. She quickly went to call her sister. Come and see. That one rushed up, said, Mommy, what is it? I said, I'm fine, I'm fine. Should I call the ambulance? Don't worry, I'm fine. She said, no. She decided to call the ambulance by herself. And I was able to, like, get up, come into, came into my room. But I was feeling so much pain. I couldn't even stand upright. I couldn't sit. I was lying down. I was feeling this excruciating pain so much pain she called the ambulance and uh, behold the ambulance came fast because maybe because i don't know because you hardly get ambulance fast that's easy easy like like that but that day the ambulance came very fast and i was taken to the hospital you know they tried to do some first aid while i was in the ambulance and uh, I thought, okay, they would just, I was even telling them, hey, give me painkiller, give me ibuprofen. I just want it. <laughs> I just want ibuprofen. Just give me painkiller. My mind was, I need to take the painkiller. I'll get better. And then I'll go finish my daughter's hair. And then tomorrow the work continue again. And then the ambulance people said, no, I think we'll have to take you to the hospital. So my other daughter had to go with me to the hospital. That was how we went to the hospital. Me and me, I was thinking too, okay, no hospital, no small, no bed in the, at, at the hospital. They would just uh, quickly treat me and let, send me home. I spent one night, two nights, and even the third night was going. And then I said, no, what is happening to me? You guys are not telling me what is happening. But me, for the two days I spent in that hospital, sitting down in the hospital, like lying in my bed there, I, it's like I needed a break to like think you know, to like 
have my life on my palm and like read it through. While I was going in the ambulance, I said I, I need to call my my youngest children, like the two smallest ones, because I know they will be scared. So I took my daughter's phone and called them. They, from their voice, I wasn't happy. And I'm not happy for, for them to see that an ambulance came in, took me away, you know, like that. I don't like that picture in their memories at all. I don't want my children to be traumatized, you know. I, I felt really bad. So while I was in the hospital, I thought to myself, Augusta, why all this stress? You have to cut down on a lot of things. I was doing practically everything. I won't say no to you. Augusta, come and do this. Yes. Augusta, come and do that. Yes. I won't say no to anything. So while in the hospital, I just started cutting down some of some things I already put in front that I want to do. You know, when you already have a, a plan, a laid out plan. Okay. In the month of July, I'll do this. In the month of August, I'll do this. I'll start this. I'll, I just had a cut. If you notice, there was a time I was not doing too much videos. And that was the time. I wasn't doing videos like I used to. Before, I used to do video like back to back. But that period, sometimes three weeks, I will not even do video. Two weeks, I will not do video, you know. I decided to cut a lot of things down. If I am feeling sleepy, I leave everything I'm doing and go and sleep. If I am tired, I stop whatever I'm doing and go and rest, you know. I started like, like listening to myself, prioritizing myself, making myself come first. Because when I came back from hospital, my daughter came to me and said, Mommy, please don't die. Ah! Or more, where are picking tell you that kind of thing? You know, she said, Mommy, please don't die. If you do, what will happen to us? I felt bad. My son will come and check on me. When I'm doing, there was a day I, before he woke, waked up in the, before he woke, English ad, before he woke up on a Sunday morning, I was already in the kitchen doing some cleaning and cooking because I wanted to, um, because we have, I'm going to be having a long day that day. So I wanted to cook something that we take everybody so that when I come back, I won't be cooking. So he came and said, I met me cleaning. I, I finished cooking. I was cleaning. And he was like, mommy, did you spend the night in the kitchen? I said, no, 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 no. He said, you need to rest, you know? So my children keep singing it on me. After that uh, incident, like you need to rest, you need to rest. So now I don't just pick shifts because there are shifts. Like anytime you see, you see this healthcare work, anytime you open the app there is a shift waiting so if you have a laro if you have longer throat you want to do all the shift and pack all the money so me i don't just sit and sit and just open and pick shift no if i see the word and the word i like to work in i'll pick a shift and if i pick one shift i have to like i don't pick shift the whole day of the week no i i i take some days in and some days off i understand some of you maybe the money is not enough you need to pay this b you need to pay that b my dear if you are bedridden if you are on a wheelchair those bills will still be paid this nurse now that just by her son now is going to still suffer. That project she wanted to do in November, the project will, will, will never be done again. That house you want to build in Nigeria will never be built again. Even if it's, maybe even if at all, somebody else will go and live in that house. Just, just a lot of things that we need to sit down like ask ourselves. If anything happens to you today, that thing that you are struggling so much to make so much money, even if it's your children, they will leave home. Ah, they will leave home. When my mother was on her deathbed, the thing that she was talking about, the thing that kept coming down from her mouth was, when she, her pastor comes that time, she will be like, Pastor, who will take care of my children? Pastor, who will take care of my children? Oh, my, my mama don't die. 20, 22 years now. My mother has been dead for 22 years. And we are all living. None of us, by not happy to any of us. We are all living. Eh, but she, she don't go. And I remember how she was struggling. You know, there was this time my mother kept struggling, struggling, struggling. And almost every evening she takes Panador, Pastor Mo. He's always in her room. He got to a time, this pre recent time too, that I said I had this so much stress in my life. If I don't take Panadol, Prastamol, or Ibuprofen, I cannot sleep well. I will be having pains all over my body because of too much stress, too much work, too much everything going around in my life. Too many things so, that I will not say in this video now. But my dear, I took stock the other day. This video is getting so long, I'll soon stop. I took stock the other day and I noticed that my Panadol there, I mean, uh, Prastamol there, the sachet never finished. I bought it since, since it's going to a month now. It never finished because I no longer have those pains. You know, now I sleep, I eat, 
I, I just have the rest. That rest, I must have it. Even if it is going to take me not to work up to 20 hours, I will just, just pay my basic, the basic money I need. The money for the house rent, the money for the council tax, and the money to feed my children. I stop. I need that rest. Your body needs rest. Your body is, is, a, is, is an engine. Your body needs the rest. If you overwork any machine without allowing that machine to rest, that machine will pack up. That is how your body is. If you overwork your body without allowing your body to rest, my dear, your body will pack up and you will not like it. It's not only nurses, not only doctors, not only healthcare workers, whichever feed you are, whatever thing you're doing, you need rest. When your body call for rest, please stop and rest. Have enough sleep. You see that sleep? Have enough sleep. Your body need that rest. Even God in all his mighty, in all his uh, 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 glory, he created the world. Six days he was working. On the seventh day, he rested. Six hours, now he work, he rests. <laughs> How six days, it six hours, I go talk. <laughs> he rested. You want to, you just came from Africa, you know, you just came or you've been in, in, in the abroad because you have so many people calling you, bring money for this, bring money, or more, if you buy, they go leave or life goes on in spite of the jerk. If you buy, those people will continue to leave. You give them money, they do big parties. You give them money, they buy big clothes. We that, we, we that live abroad, we don't buy big clothes. We want to buy one jacket, we are done. One t-shirt, we wait for sales. We buy the things from sales and we are done. But these people, they throw party, birthday party, dedication, name me, a graduation. They do all the parties. They cook all the food. They go to do point and key. They go for barbecue. They do everything that we don't do. They socialize. They have communal life. We don't have these things. But we walk the money. Send the money to them. Build houses and they live in those houses. In all of my ranting, what I have to tell you is rest. I am a number one. In fact, I have experience in this matter and I'm telling you. That is why I copied this video from Obodo Ibo. I said, I want to show it to you people. You need to rest. 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 It affects a lot of things. So rest. <laughs> now, don't want to watch this video. I will come back with another better one. Make you have a lovely day. Bye bye.